Okay, hi there, welcome to a macro video we were discussing in class today, the concept of purchasing power parity, or PPP for short. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about the concept and the application of purchasing power parity, including the economics of the big Mac index. So the question is often asked, why is some data that you get given in, in a, an economics exam or paper, why is some data expressed as purchasing power parity adjusted, PPP? Well, purchasing power parity uh, involves looking at the relative cost of buying goods and services across different countries, and it's used to determine effective living costs, uh, a comparison of living costs between countries. So typically you take the price of a, of a basket of goods and services in one country, and compare it with the cost of living in another country. We normally take the United States as our benchmark for the cost of living. And it's quite interesting. It, it typically gives a better indication of what money can buy in different countries. So if you have, for example, if you have $100 or $1,000, what can you buy in New York City? What can you buy in Mumbai? What can you buy in Beijing? What can you buy in uh, Seoul in South Korea or London in the UK? Clearly, if living costs are varying across countries, uh, that, that hundred or thousand dollars will give you a different purchasing power. Um, you could measure GDP, the value of national output, purely at market exchange rates. Let's just take the value of a country's output of goods and services, from farming, from manufacturing, from services, for example, and just convert from a national currency to dollars, and you then get GDP at market exchange rates. Well. That's fine, but this chart, published by the IMF for 2017, expresses GDP at purchasing power parity. So not, over, not only have they converted to dollars, US dollars, but they're also expressing the value of the output of goods and services in one country, for example, Japan or Indonesia or Italy, compared to the cost of goods and services in the base year country, uh, the base value country, which is the United States. So with PPP, we're adjusting the data for differences in costs and prices between countries. As a result, it's quite interesting, for 2017, can you see that China actually becomes the world's biggest economy on a PPP basis? It overtakes the United States by some distance. India, which has a per capita GDP of just over $1,500, uh, but in fact, because living costs are very low in India, relatively low, their PPP living standards jumps up to something like $7,000. And in fact, the size of the Indian economy, can you see at the bottom there, measured at PPP, 2017, now that takes, takes India to third in the rank order of the world's largest countries. The UK comes ninth on a PPP basis, 2,900, sorry, $2.93 trillion. So PPP is just a way of adjusting for relative uh, prices across countries. Now, this chart is quite revealing. It compares the price level index data of selected countries. I've taken a variety of countries, not every one that's been published for 2018. And you can see at the bottom that prices in Switzerland, expensive country, were something like 28% higher than the United States average in 2018. That suggests that Switzerland is, mo is more expensive to live in than the United States, which many of you will understand if you've if you've been to Switzerland or maybe the Scandinavian countries, or even Australia, for example. Um, whereas in India, Malaysia, Bangladesh, the cost of living, the price index is something like a third of the United States level or less. So hence, those countries at the top of this chart, they would go up a rank order of GDP or GNI on a PPP basis. The UK, can you see there, uh, living costs slightly below the states, 97.2. Can you see the United States there at 100? That tells you that the base price level they choose are the prices of goods and services in the United States. Now, what is the Big Mac Index and how do economists use it? Well, the Big Mac Index was created, I think, in 1986, if memory serves. So it's now well over 30 years old. And it was introduced by The Economist, a British magazine, The Economist, and they publish it once or twice a year. And it's just basically a way, a kind of nice, easily digestible way, if you like, 
of trying to measure the purchasing power parity between currencies. Uh, and it comes down to basically what's what is a currency worth in terms of real 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 terms when people go out to buy goods and services, including a Big Mac. Uh, so this is the latest data I have of for January 2020. Uh, and it shows the price of a Big Mac for selected countries in US dollars. Now, why would you choose the Big Mac? Well, the Big Mac is pretty much universally universally available. If you go to most airports or most cities around the world, you should be able to get a Big Mac or something that, that uh, is pretty pretty close to it. So it's a fairly universally available product, one reason. Secondly, it's a fairly standardised product. The whole nature of manufacturing and retail, of course, is that the ingredients are essentially the same. And so in theory, you have a universal and standard product, which in theory, the price of a Big Mac from country to country should be pretty similar. That's the theory. Of course, in practice, we know that the price of a Big Mac at retail level in dollars varies a great deal as this chart shows. So we were discussing in class today, why is it the case that in Switzerland, the Big Mac is going to cost you $6.71 uh, $5.70 in the United States, $4.5 in the UK, all the way down to $3 in China. And in fact, in South Africa, a Big Mac would only cost you $2. Well, there's lots of reasons why uh, the prices may vary. So it may well be the case, for example, that there are just big differences in per capita incomes. We know that living standards vary across countries, high versus low income countries. And of course, if you've got a high per capita income, Retailers, McDonald's franchises can sell the Big Mac perhaps for a higher price because there's a higher level of effective demand in the market. Big Macs are more affordable because of income differences. Secondly, although it's a standardised product, there will be variations in the marginal cost of supply. Labour costs could be, could be different. There could be different minimum wages, for example, in the fast food industries across different countries. Commercial rents to McDonald's franchises and other outlets may be different in cost. So city centre rent, for example, in Tokyo, or city centre rent in the United States could be much bigger than the cost of renting a franchise in Cape Town, for example. We also know, and this is crucial, point three is really important, exchange rates play a role. So exchange rates can often diverge quite, quite big time from purchasing power parity for extended periods of time. Uh, and that reflects other factors, the risk and the stability of currencies, interest rates and, and much else besides. So exchange rates can diverge. The South African land at the moment is very low versus the US dollar and also the pound. You get a lot of land uh, for your pound, a lot of, lot of land for your dollar, uh, and that makes the Big Mac look cheaper. And it, it certainly increases the purchasing power of tourists. We're chatting to people today who've been to South Africa on holiday and because the land is so weak against the pound and against the dollar, eating out is extremely cheap uh, for tourists whose dollars and pounds have a real strong purchasing power. It could also be the case that there might be variations in taxation. Some countries have high spending taxes and low income taxes. Other countries, the reverse. So, for example, fast food products might be subject to an indirect tax, a sales tax, VAT, in one country but not in another. Another really interesting point that was made by a student was a really subtle point that maybe the price of a Big Mac uh, reflects a little bit different levels of competition. Could be the case that in a country you have a high level of market competition, much more vigorous competing Substitute brands in the burger market, that can keep prices down, whereas McDonald's might enjoy a bit of monopoly in some parts of the world, in which case they can they can keep prices a bit higher. And of course, keep in mind that tariffs can make a difference. Maybe in the case that you're having to import your food, your ingredients and things. So tariffs can also have an impact on relative price differences. Typically, uh, if you look at the Big Mac index, some of the cheapest places to buy a Big Mac tend to be in countries where per capita incomes are low, where rent levels are fairly low, uh, and also when the exchange rate uh, is low, making um, a dollar buy a lot of rand or a lot of rubles or Indian rupees, for example. However, uh, this is just by way of illustration, the key point to take away from this video is that oftentimes we express data in PPP purchasing power parity adjustment. It's just a way of making a little adjustment to try to reflect, and it's not perfect, try to reflect living costs between countries. And I think it does help a little bit 
uh, for us to get a, a stronger handle on variations in real living standards and the real size of economies at a given moment in time. Okay, thank you very much for joining in this macro video.